Janet Albrechtstedt is a long-time Murdoch flying monkey. She writes for the brain of the Murdoch press. She's the chairman of the brain of the Liberal Party that Murdoch's daddy set up. I mean, to add to Mark Latham's famous quote, how much deeper up the conga line of suck holes could you be? She is a colon worm of the coalition. She spends her life wriggling from tax write-off event to tax write-off event and speaking for, I'm guessing, 20 grand a pop to say amazingly insightful things that you've never heard Murdoch talking heads regurgitate like. On this side of, of, of politics, we welcome debate. We understand that the gem sitting at the core of Western civilization is that contest of ideas. And it's only with that contest of ideas that you rid a society of the dumb ideas and allow the best ideas to triumph. Oh, you could tell she was constructing that sentence for three hours and still... Uh, pretty shit, Jan. Not happy, Jan! But that gives you the gist of what her bloated salary's based off, right? How good are ideas? None of us have any ideas, by the way, but we really like the idea of ideas. Almost as much as the word ideas. La! Janet Albrechtstedt is your run-of-the-mill, quote-unquote, free speech warrior that this political corporate nexus spews out to pretend that their research, which always comes to the same conclusion of, we believe that cigarettes and coal shouldn't be regulated because that's not freedom in this very narrow definition of freedom we've defined that exclusively benefits drug peddlers and coal plants. Now, if you'll excuse me, I can feel my vertebrate snapping as I've been standing upright for close to an hour and my neck can't support the weight of my gigantic skull for that long. <laughs> Too late, I'm quadriplegic. James, be a darling, wheel me off. But just remember, these strong held beliefs of freedom to f you and f the environment isn't because they're funded by companies that f you and f the environment. God no, perish the thought. If you look at um, who funds the IPA, uh, 10 years ago it was big business, you know, it was the elite of Australia. Today it's not big business at all, they give us zero dollars. It's, it, it's, it's, it's small, quiet Australians. It's people who have built businesses from nothing. Yeah, struggling small business owners like Gina Reinhart. Hancock Prospecting's modest in comparison to Amazon. Gina gave the IPA $4.5 million over the span of a couple of years. Five years ago. Oh, that's almost 10 years, Janet. Halfway there. We didn't learn that from the IPA, of course. That came from Gina's financial statement. So let me ask you this. Don't you think there's a bit of an alarm bell when Gina Reinhart, the woman who spearheaded the mining tax scare campaign, is more honest than Janet, who argues Gina's case for a living? The truth is, we have no idea who funds the IPA. They say they're grassroots, but all fossil fuel think tanks say they're grassroots, yet when you ask for a list of their donors, no, we respect their privacy. Hancock Prospecting may or may not approve of this message. Anyway, as you can see from the institution, this female doll front, she raps evil in lies for a living. No wonder she has a drinking problem. Look, she wants gin with her coffee. It's like 10 in the morning. I hope she has a drinking problem anyway. It would be the most charitable explanation for the complete deterioration of that woman's brain. I would love to explain why Jeanette Albrechtson is a complete and utter schizophrenic nutter. But being the complete and utter schizophrenic nutter that Jeanette Albrechtson is, you know who does a much better job at explaining why she's a complete and utter schizophrenic nutter? Jeanette Albrechtson. Read this woman's life's work. Actually, don't bother, it's really boring, but I've read a couple of articles. It's very apparent that she'd bury herself alive with John Locke's corpse if she could. Talks about free speech more than Dr. Harry talks about cats pissing in your house. Yet now she's lamenting Scott Morrison didn't throw me in a dungeon for daring to speak against the Queen. What can I say? Highlighting Nicole Flint's awful voting record in Parliament hits a nerve of Janet's. Flagging the government, not silencing me as. Raising the prospect that these online reforms are a look at me exercise heading into an election. New laws won't transform politicians into leaders with conviction. That, right there, is as usual a shit line that could have been said in half the time. Honestly, Janet, how are you a professional writer? But it's also the Murdoch press telling the government, if you want to support this election, this whole, I'm going to shut down the competitors of News Corp and Nine Fairfax that you've been banging on about, better not just be hot air, put a lab rat in front of that, Ray. I want to see what this baby does. Show us that you're actually going to silence your critics, or we'll turn on you like Peter Hellier on a pack of Monte Carlos in the Project Green Room. Oh, yeah, that's the only reason I'm still in this job. Oh. That's why you can see Scott Morrison campaigning. Campaigning! on how he, the leader of the so-called party of free speech, wants to shut down your free speech. Isn't that incredible? He's make America great again. Shut up! That's how unimportant the public is to the Liberal Party. They're not even pretending to campaign to you. Your basic right 
of using your mouth is an all too willing piece of tribute to the constituency the Liberal Party actually caught, Mrs Frankenstein and the rest of the Ariel monsters, all who've spent their lowly lives using their freedom of speech, when no one else had the platform to do so by the way, living in this grand delusion that I must be saying what everyone else is thinking because no one else is saying anything. I'm that good at summing it up. So cocky from that North Sentinel Island level of protectionism that they arrogantly migrated to Twitter as the immediate gratification of getting reciprocal pats on the back for releasing two minute read articles was far too much effort. Janet needed claps for having cocktails with her friends, didn't you know? Yeah, the girls. It was here they faced the very rude awakening when competing on an equal platform that gave everyone a voice. This is the first time in history you actually do have free speech, by the way. You for the first time ever, no matter where you are, you have the power to tell Scott Morrison he looks like a store manager of Bing Lee, and I highly advise you do. And at that point, the exact point, you got free speech. All the free speech warriors declared a war on free speech. What the f***? This is why you see Murdoch monkeys like Jeanette Al Brexton, who made a 20 year career out of saying things like, um, which try to regulate what we can uh, and do say. So we've got um, the Herald Column and Sandra Bolton, for example, being sued under the Racial Discrimination Act. It's not just um, being brought before court, it's the threat of being brought before court. It does freeze debate. And that's not all. I'm very concerned about laws that try to regulate hate speech for the simple reason that um, one person's hate is another person's open but perhaps offensive speech and I certainly don't think we should be regulating offensive speech because if you do believe in free speech at the very heart of that mm. is allowing what uh, in, in, in will be to some people offensive. Yet now she's saying it would be useful to know if police are investigating whether those demented online attacks by Shanks Markovina are a breach of section 474.171 of the Federal Criminal Code and if not why not. Sorry that sentence had too many inflections. She's a monotone adding machine basically, but still same f***ing alco. You know how Rain Man doesn't exist? It's a character played by Dustin Hoffman. Took me 15 years to figure that out, but the clues were in the film, i.e. the credits. That is all I want you to think when you see columnists for the Murdoch press. They're Rain Man, but with no special skills. Actors. Murdoch journalists are actors playing drones on a science fiction hive mind planet as they're all playing the exact same character. God, how's that for a new level of limited range, eh? Now, I'm not saying the role isn't challenging. Janet's multifaceted character, Janet, has been whining about a sisterhood in privileged positions that screeches misogynist and anyone who attempts to dislodge them for years. Now that I've attacked someone in her sisterhood, though, can you guess what she does? Misogynist! Well... To borrow a phrase from one of the greatest minds in the Australian press. But it's uncanny how the sisterhood strikes when it suits, for political purposes and not as a matter of principle. Hmm, words of wisdom, that's something to mull on your Sunday brunch. The rest of this video is just going to be a compilation of the countless times Jeanette Albrechtson has rubbed herself dry over how principled she is on free speech. Like when she said... So what is the role of the media in this unfinished work of liberty? Well, surely it's to question, to challenge, to explore, to be intellectually honest and intellectually curious. And when we, we in the media stop doing these things, I think we stop servicing that machinery that powers the marketplace of ideas. Yet here she is reducing my criticisms of Nicole Flint's deplorable time in Parliament to yet again, can you guess? I'll give you a million dollars if you do. Offer is already expired. A handful of insults plucked from half an hour of video she clearly didn't watch. She sponged that list directly off another journalist. She sponged that off a press release. I mean. How less intellectually honest and intellectually curious could you be? She's already at this level. Blah. Blah. Demanding I be criminally prosecuted for swear words I didn't even say like dick hole. Apparently dick hole is outrageous, says woman who defends the use of the N-bomb. If you mess with the power of Twain's words, you mess with the power of Twain's message. And if school children are to really think about American history, for example, in the Deep South, they need to read about <laughs> The history and the language are certainly confronting. But then great literature unsettles us. It's meant to. It forces us to think about our reactions. If we're offended, we think about why we're, why we're offended. 
By denying us the ability to think, political correctness is a heresy if we're truly committed to liberalism. Yet in her article attacking me, abusing me, she draws the line at bitch. How? Maybe she explains why she does this clip, which conveniently follows, of her using the word bitch. One pundit wrote about this in Canada, that the handmaid's tale is still fiction, but wax my balls, bitch? Well, that's a real life horror story. <laughs> What a female dog. It is hard to encapsulate just how hypocritical this dunce is. This is the same woman who never stops bitching about double standards in free speech and about how it's okay when the left says it, but when the right says it. Seen here not just using the word bitch, celebrating its use of political discourse. In fact, so great is using the word bitch, specifically in political discourse, that it's cause for round of applause. But when I use bitch, I should be tried as a criminal. This is coming from the same cyst on humanity, by the way, who also said... You know, I have a real problem with hate laws. I, you know, if we can't come up with laws which are wrong for, you know, reason A, B and C, if we have to put an adjective onto the laws, then I think they are inherently too subjective. But now thinks I should have a law thrown at me that she herself outlines is determined by if the speech is menacing, harassing or offensive. Those are all adjectives. This woman who hates laws against free speech, especially if they're defined by adjectives, is demanding a law be used on me to shut down my free speech that is only defined by adjectives. And yet, that's not even as close to as hypocritical as this evil ventriloquist dummy gets. This is like pulling out a root wart. This is gonna take a while. Look, this old, old bat has spent most of her life, so the past 800 years, railing against Section 18C, which I must say, Jan, retire now. You're too old for this job. You can't work for a paper that accuses Joe Biden of having dementia and have dementia. How many times have you repeated something along the lines of... 18C inhibits the marketplace <coughs> of ideas. Instead, it fuels the marketplace of outrage where people are treated as victims and they're, they're encouraged to scream loud to shut down debate they find offensive. Look it up. Countless articles of her mumbling about 18C letting the Muslims win or some shit, now saying, a 18C style provision in the SCA might protect a few women, but every reform involves a balancing act to consider unintended consequences. We just pause to take stock here. I'm not even halfway done, and I'm running out of descriptions for how bad her character is. I'm down to, uh, Janet Albrechtson. They should call you, uh, Janet Al Capone. Heh. <laughs> Heh. <laughs> Come see my stand-up. It's Al right. It could apply a reasonable woman threshold test, but its application will depend on judges who often salivate at the prospect of using the bench to socially engineer their idea of a polite society. You see that? The law she said many times over must be repealed. No if, buts, and babies about it. Soon as it suits her, it's a balancing act, is it, Jan? Yeah, you covered your ass. That doesn't sound like you're a complete and utter sellout at all. Identity crisis averted. I'm just gonna keep going on with more of your 18C classics. Section 18C is part of a growing hypersensitivity across Western liberal democracies and, unwittingly, Abdel Megid, who made headlines last year by storming out of the Brisbane Writers' Festival, has proved why one person's sensitivity should not be allowed to undermine freedom of expression. I'm sorry, I, I know you're getting the gist of this one, but it's just so unbelievably hypocritical. Demanding I be prosecuted for my freedom of expression using that very law because of one person's sensitivity. Man Harren Monas, the man who took hostages in a 17-hour siege at the Link Cafe Martin Place seven years ago on a Wednesday, had been charged with 12 counts of breaching a similar section that makes it a criminal offence to use a postal service to menace, offend or harass someone. Monas' lawyers argued the letters were protected by the implied freedom to political communication. The High Court ultimately split 3-3. Yep, didn't work on an ISIS shell. Let's see if this works on the real terrorists, a private citizen who prefers... The last government. 
Well, I guess we found where the puppets for the Murdoch press draw the line of expressing yourself, and that appears to be criticising anyone who isn't Malcolm Turnbull and fair. His jihad on Josh must be stopped before he shoots up a Chinese restaurant in Canberra with a shirt cannon filled with Save Our Elbow shirts. Free speech is not, as Mark Stein said, a left-right thing. It's a free-unfree thing. You don't get to cry in favour of free speech just to defend those with whom you agree. And free speech must, as Jim said, include the right to offend. Because if we prosecute offensive opinions, we just encourage ever more ridiculous claims to victimhood and protection. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the ever more ridiculous claims to victimhood and protection that the prophetic Janet Albrechtson tried to warn us all about. You made me do this, academic leftists I think exist. Shank said about Nicole Flint, I don't hate you because you're a woman. This goes far deeper than that. I hate you because you exist. Think about what a better world the world would be without Nicole Flint. There is more, but this is enough. Let me just translate that last sentence for you using the good old Madeline sign off. That's all there is. There isn't any more. That's all the juice she could squeeze out of that lemon, and yet she's still that bitter. I forced little Miss Lefty's a soft cocks into a panic room, aka safe space, because I simply asked how much better the world would be if Nicole Flint didn't exist. That's the same as shooting up a cafe, according to the woman who again once stated, If we prosecute offensive opinions, we just encourage ever more ridiculous claims to victimhood and protection. Now hyperventilating as she screams at the cops, He's trying to kill her! Uh, Ma'am, this sounds an awful lot like claims of victimhood and protection. I know it sounds like that, but you have to understand. She's part of the sisterhood. I'm not even dignifying that with a serious response, other than to note that it is truly astonishing that one of the most important pens in the country belongs to a batshit cough who has made so many egregious compromises, rationalised supporting so many horrendous endeavours in a complete vacuum of impunity that she can treat the last 20 years of her own life like it's one of the many blackout benders she's probably had. Yes, 20 years. In more than 20 years of writing, I haven't asked for anyone to be silenced or censored. I haven't asked for anyone to be banned from entering this country. I haven't supported the no platforming or censorship of anyone from debates. In fact, I've challenged ideas sometimes robustly, maybe even rudely, certainly head on. I say, give it your best shot. What have you got to say? And here's what I say in response. Oh, really? Well, Janet, here's what I have to say in response to you. Teddy! Oh, I guess you're gonna have to start at year zero now, Janet. That's a shame. There's no way you're gonna live long enough to get back up to 20 again. Is that a death threat? No. You're older than what you try to make yourself out to be in your profile photos, that's all. Have you ever said a single sentence that doesn't contradict another sentence you said? You're consistently contradictory, which is contradictorily consistent, I congratulate you on that. You can pretend that my entire video history of Nicole Flint is three seconds of me coming on in a wig yelling, Wily little bitch, wish you didn't exist, Deco! See you next week, kids! But even in the laws that you again, very hypocritically, unbelievably hypocritically outlined. The average person, so not you, Janet, you're a superwoman. The average person would have to consider it not a joke. Which is why she says, some call this chap a political satirist. Not even close. Wanna be Fox News presenter James Morrow did the same thing to me on radio. You point out how many times these c**ts have defended comedians in the past for being on PC and their Matrix dodges. Actually, I've decided he's not a comedian. This comedian, and I think the word comedian, as you suggest, is doing a fairly heavy lift. James, you're too fat to dodge bullets, first off. You think you're the Matrix 1, you're the Matrix 4. And yet, despite how much of a travesty to art the Matrix 4 was, he's still in a better position to criticise art than Janet, who used to say that comedy not only should, must be confronting, lest we turn into the brave new world, of course, now says that what I do isn't satire because it's confronting, and thinks the reason it's not satire is, can't wait for this by the way, I'm very interested in the topic, I've read over 50 books on comedic theory of my life, so I'm very excited to see what the most humorless woman on earth can add to that. It's going to be like hearing a blind person describe an eye chart. Satire requires intellect and substance. It uses clever parody, a crafty turn of phrase. Shanks Mark Avena's YouTube post is a barrage of anger and hate towards Flint and other women. Now that 
is some next level satire. What Janet just said about political satire is like saying, paintings only use the color brown and fingers. And if you use a brush, it's not a painting, it's a barrage of paint. What the f happened to her brain? Brain aneurysm from having to defend Rita Panay too much over the years? I get that art is inherently subjective, but having said that, Janet, you are still the last person on earth that should have any opinion on creativity. Your life is mindlessly regurgitating what other people have said in the past. Your 20 minute speeches are almost entirely quotes. This person wants a this thing. You're basically a selective, ineffective Google search engine. You make Ask Jeeves look good, and yet out of all the arts, comedy is the one that you are least positioned to critique. And here's why. This is your type five. Thank you so much. It's great to be here at Big Ideas tonight. Yeah, yeah, warming up the crowd, all right, got to do that. Um, after all, if we were in a university lecture hall, I'd probably have to issue some kind of trigger warning. Woohoo! trigger warning? You can't say that on TV. No one's ever joked about that before. So much intellect and substance. That the following content will offend old-style feminists, modern-day grievance warriors, and most certainly Julia Gillard. Woo! She went there. Hard truths. Making me think differently. Mm, that's what good comedy does, right? And if we were, if I was, le I was attending a uh, conference of university students, I'd have to politely ask you not to applause at the end, because it triggers anxiety. And if you could just please do this kind of weird jazz hand thing instead. Jazz hand, jazz hand instead of a clap, fresher than an R. Kelly victim. Could you imagine a world like that? It's getting there, though, hey! Feminism should really be summed up by Helen Reddy's iconic song, and you know the lyrics, I am woman, hear me roar. Instead, though, the lyrics of modern feminism go something like this, I am woman, hear me whine. Oh, that sucked. You see, all her jokes suck, and... Hang on, does that... Does that sound familiar? She's the sigh of politics. A one-hit wonder. Her Gangnam style is, I am woman, hear me whine. I swear, I thought it was original material. I didn't steal a bit. It just happens like that in showbiz sometimes. Yeah, and some bugs life. It's the same shit. This is how little it takes that so-called proud defender of free speech over the last 20 years to flip and demand you go to jail. I said that line in. The Nicole Flint video, she's whining is offensive. The same line she uses to start a speech on why women are too easily offended. Perfect way to finish this video. You can use the exact same words as her, the exact same words. But when she says it, it's free speech, and when I say it, it's hate speech. Sorry to keep quoting her, but again, the woman who once said. I'm very concerned about laws that try to regulate hate speech for the simple reason that um, one person's hate is another person's open but perhaps offensive speech and I certainly don't think we should be regulating offensive speech because if you do believe in free speech at the very heart of that mm. is allowing what uh, in, in, in will be to some people offensive. Have you noticed that throughout this entire exchange no one in the Liberals, the Murdoch press, ABC pundits, none of them, none of them have offered a single counter argument that is even based on the facts I brought up. Not one. To distract you from my basic point, which is Nicole Flint's voting record is f***ed. They've had to invent this lame parallel universe where I'm an evil man on screen suffering from Tourette's yelling about my hatred of women. Well, let me ask you this. If they could defend Nicole Flint's voting record, don't you think they would have instead of deliberately ignoring the bulk of the video multiple times over? I'm begging them at this point, please. This is maybe the third time I have. Please respond to the votes of the government that I've pointed out that you are doing everything you can to hide from the public. My guess is that they'll again hide it from you. Why? Because no one in their right mind would vote for a government that evil, that if the public knew what the Liberals actually did to this country, they would never form government ever again. And so to keep a party that represents no one except their sponsors in power almost permanently, they have to pretend that politics is this lame battle of ideas. It's not. It's a battle for resources. According to them, it's fine we're impoverishing our own population by letting mining companies not pay any tax. That's because we're defending the higher ideal of free enterprise, you see. Well, might Janet's organisation be arguing that blue-collared workers be paid less and work in dangerous conditions? And sure, that might kill some blue-collared workers, but they died in the pursuit of ensuring that red tape 
didn't kill business. Everyone has the right to say anything they want and not be subjected to the law for what they think, but some animals clearly are more equal than others. Am I doing satire right yet, Janet? If you think this is a beef between Nicole and me, it's not. It's a distraction. We're characters. Characters in a wider narrative that if you read between the lines of it, it shows what this nexus of power, the IPA, the Murdoch press and the Liberal Party, what they actually find menacing, harassing or offensive. And it is that for the first time in history, someone can actually say, I think the alternative government's better and have a platform to express that view and they don't have control over it. Therefore, give me some money. Throw us a few bucks on Patreon so we can continue to grow and counter their endless propaganda because as you can plainly see, it's us against the Hydra. The aim is to grow to the point that these evil, abhorrent people never have their hands on the levers of power over this country again, which is actually what they find offensive. That we are actually getting to a level where we can call out the bullies. Like and subscribe, get your tickets to my brand new stand-up show at FriendlyGeordies.com, which according to Jeanette L. Brexton doesn't exist. Please share and comment below. Command.